right, we're inside the Ford Performance Tech Center. We're going to show you something really cool coming up. NASCAR programs and, and analytics supervisor. So I'm primarily focused on our on our NASCAR program and going to the track every week to support our teams with all the engineering tools and, and, and services that, that we provide. And a lot of that comes out of this building. Um, obviously, the, the centerpiece of the building is the driving simulators, but there's also a lot of other things that, that we do here beyond just the driving simulator. So I wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about that. So we opened this facility in 2014, and if you go back to in, in history of Ford Performance, that was really when the, the motorsports engineering organization for Ford Performance really was, was created, and, and, and Mark Rushbrook was, was tapped to lead that. So prior to that, we really didn't have a true motorsports engineering organization. And so uh, we wanted to create that to better tie, you know, l the lessons learned from racing on track to the production cars and take lessons from production and apply that t to the racing world. And so the Ford Performance Motorsports Engineering Organization does that. And the, and the Tech Center, right, is, is a piece here in Charlotte that lets us support our race teams uh, and support all of our other racing programs, um, you know, with the, with the simulators and with the wind tunnels that are, that are close by here as, as well. So, uh, that was really kind of what, what got us started here with, with, with the facilities. We needed a place to have the simulators, and we've grown now from, from one simulator, which is MS1, right, right here, which you'll see, to now we have three simulators here in the building. So um, it's, it's a technology that, that's grown quite a bit, and, and we've grown quite a bit with it. So, like I said, that is kind of the, the centerpiece of the building is the simulators. Our, our NASCAR teams are here um, every day. You, you might have seen some Stuart Haas and Penske guys walking around. So they all have a, a day where they use the, the, the simulators, but we also have our WRC programs use it, our IMSA programs use it, um, our, our core production teams use it, like the guys mentioned, Dark Horse was developed here, Raptor is developed here, all of our performance cars ha have had a chance to get developed here. So it's a, it's a huge opportunity and a huge engineering asset for the company to use those simulators. Another thing we do out of here is we have our aero model shop, and so we build our, our scale models here. Um, an example of a scale model is kind of right there behind Matt is uh, that's an old GT scale model but that's essentially what what we'll do for some of our programs and it's really kind of based on what the rules of the of the series are like we have a WRC scale model we've had uh, NASCAR truck scale models we've had NASCAR cup scale models we've had NHRA models so it kind of just depends on on what our goals are but there's a, uh, a a scale wind tunnel in in Mooresville that's run by Penske and so we can use that facility build those models here, take them back and forth. And, and obviously, scale model testing is a lot more efficient than full scale testing, right? You can run through changes quicker, the models aren't is it nearly as expensive as a full size vehicle. So that's the reason we do that. We do run that, that program out of here. Uh, like I also mentioned, the uh, full scale wind tunnels, the Aerodyne is up in Mooresville, wind shear is, is just down the road. And so mm -hmm. we uh, do a lot of, of um, of testing at those wind tunnels and our aero engineers sit here support a lot of that wind tunnel testing and development and you know Ford as a lesson learned right for, from wind shear now has the the full scale rolling road tunnel there in, in Allen Park so that was another example of how we develop technology down here and, and take that back to Dearborn because there's also driving simulators in in Dearborn too so those are two big things uh, that we do here. We also use this as a data center uh, for our NASCAR operations. Uh, we get a lot of data in the, in the NASCAR world nowadays. And so we have a tech trailer at, at the track and uh, that, that collects all that data, sends it back here. And then the, the teams who have their war rooms uh, just down the road, uh, they'll all sync here and get all the information that, that we have at the track from pictures, videos, um, all the data we get off the cars, all, all that all that comes here and then the, and then the the teams can uh, can sync that from here as part of their race day operations. So that's uh, a little overview, kind of 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 what we do here beyond uh, you know just the simulators. There's quite a bit of other things going on too, but the simulators are are a, a, a main piece of that. Anybody have uh, any any questions or yeah? Is any of your F1 we don't anticipate that. Uh, we may have some engineers that, that, that are stationed here that, that support it, but you know, I think most of that's going to be done um, you know, overseas with, with Red Bull. Are your sims operating all the time? Yes. Yeah, we, um, well, not 24-7, not right? The, we, we lack some people resources to do that, but um, yeah, we're, our, our simulators start at 7 and they end around 5 or 6 every day. Yep. And, and generally the way we operate it is each, each team has a day, like Penske has a day, Haas has a day, Roush Fenway has a day, and so forth. But we also, like I said, because we have three of them, we can mix in our production teams, we can mix in our truck teams, our Xfinity teams, WRC. So uh, we do service all of our programs with, with all three simulators.
So my R racing league race is at about eight o'clock tonight. Yeah. Can I jump on? Yeah. Yeah, come on in. Just let's just file a little room in here. All right, so um, this is uh, our NASCAR next gen. Uh, is this next gen buff? It is. Yeah. Ne our next gen buff. Um, Dan Tiley is our simulation engineer. He uh, he runs the simulators, and uh, we have David Reagan over here as well, who's who's our uh, expert driver tonight for, for this demonstration. So I'm gonna let Dan and, and David talk a little bit about how, how they use the simulator uh, every day here at the Tech Center. First of all, thank you everyone for, for coming out today. This is a, a bigger group than I expected. So welcome to the Ford Technical Center. Um, uh, this is uh, our actual first of three uh, full-size uh, simulators that we use here at the Tech Center. So. Uh, we, Back in 2014, this is the only one that we had, and since then we've grown to add a second one and then eventually a, a third one this year. So uh, it's become really an integral part of our day-to-day our -day development for racing, and then of course trickling down to uh, to the performance streetcars and, and even just regular uh, streetcars that uh, are used every day. NASCAR, I should say. Uh, we also do World Rallycross. Uh, we do um, and a lot of the, the performance streetcar programs like the Dark Horse R and, and, the, and the Street Dark Horse. Uh, those programs are done here and, and now in, in Dearborn in our, uh, our facility up there. Yeah, I, I guess I'll, I'll open up the questions. We are going to do a, a demonstration. Uh, David Reagan is going to be our driver. David Reagan is a, a former NASCAR Cup Series driver, a winning uh, Cup Series driver. <laughs> Uh, and he, he drives our, our wheel force program car, so we have a, a, full, a full NASCAR car that goes to, their, goes to several tracks and uh, fully instrumented wheel sensors, uh, I don't know, a good 150 sensors on the car itself. And David drives that, uh, he, gets, he collects all this, or gives us all this feedback at the track, but then he also comes in here on Monday uh, after uh, being at the track and drives the simulator. Retired a few years ago from full-time competition and Ford was really expanding their uh, testing program and the wheel force uh, transducer car that uh, all the manufacturers have that collects the, uh, the data specifically to the, the tires. Uh, so when we have rule changes or Goodyear has a, a tire change, well, we go to the racetrack and run a couple of days, run through a lot of different uh, settings and, and even tire combinations. and. Uh, we, we collect all that data uh, as, a, uh, as an OEM. We have all of our teams that, uh, that Ford supports in the Cup Series uh, come with us to those tests, and then we, we come back here and, um, and, and try to uh, critique all, all the data that we have, and, and really uh, a lot of work goes into um, building models and scanning the parts and the pieces, and. Our, uh, our engine shop provides um, like an engine model. You know, we've got a CFD program that when they have a, a new updated uh, aero map, so, so they put all that together and it kind of builds the, the, the physics, the kind of the back end for this simulator. And then we go to the racetrack and kind of test to kind of confirm, you know, and, and really uh, uh, kind of run a, a fine tooth comb through, through all of that, uh, that data to, to make this 
as realistic uh, as we can. And, and this isn't something that you know just developed over the last six months or even six years. I, I was was racing for Ford full time in 2014 when when this was new, and I remember coming in here at kind of an event like this and thinking, man, you know, this is kind of a a glorified uh, video game, but over the last 10 years, Ford has, has spent a tremendous amount of, of money and resources, and then technology ha has advanced in the last 10 years that um, every single Cup Series NASCAR team, um, they, they're here every single week. Uh, the drivers are, it's part of their weekly routine uh, to, to be at the simulator, just like they're at the race shop having a competition meeting or doing sponsor appearances or doing whatever. So this has been a, a very integral part of, 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 of all forms of racing. Um, like uh, Dan was, was saying, you know, sports car guys come in here, uh, the, the different types of rally cross and, and, and you know, the different levels of NASCAR uh, all spend a lot of time here. So um, when I sit down in this, uh, in this buck, you know, if I were to just close my eyes and then open once he has the graphics, on the screen, I, I would think I'm at a at a race track. Uh, it's got my seat insert, you know, the same seat belts, the same dash uh, display. Uh, the the settings are are the same. Uh, it's got the real you know brake pedal, throttle, clutch uh, in here with the, uh, the the same torsion rate. The, the same. Uh, they try to get it exactly the same. You know, if it, one driver likes a a, a stiff throttle return spring, you know, they'll have that in the notes for when that driver comes that, that he feels like he's, he's in his real race car. So uh, there's been a, a lot of development that has taken place here and yet yeah, it, it only gets more detailed each and every month. I feel like we're working on new projects that um, uh, we just had a race. I'll let Dan talk a little bit about the, the Chicago street course race. It was the first for NASCAR a few weeks ago. And so the process of, of having that track scanned, uh, building the track, you know, from just uh, some of the, uh, you know, like, like Google Maps and, and measurements and, and, and doing things that, you know, these guys did on the back end. And then, um, you know, coming in here and the drivers, they, they didn't get to test the, the street course, obviously. Uh, so they counted on this simulator to really get up to speed and, and learn the track layout. But the engineers and the crew chiefs, they counted on the simulator to, you know, learn trends for setup and, and for the engine shop wanted the gear ratios to know the, the power, you know, RPM uh, band that we would be racing in. So, I mean, that was really a, a true test to uh, all the, the technology that they have. So, so that was a great example of how, I mean, just how many layers <laughs> goes into, um, you know, making this thing operate and spitting out data that we all can believe. And, and you know, over the past 10 years, uh, this is one of the, probably the most important tool that, that our teams work with on a weekly basis.